my name is Paul Osman, and today I'm going to be talking about open telemetry and honeycomb. So at Honeycomb, we're big fans of the Open Telemetry project. Um, my name is Paul Osman. I'm a lead engineer on the telemetry team. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about open telemetry, why we think it's really important, and uh, covering a little bit of Honeycomb's journey, where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. So to start off, you know, what is open telemetry? And uh, the way I've heard it best described, open telemetry is a collection of tools, APIs, SDKs that allow you to generate and export telemetry data. Uh, what's important about this is that telemetry, or open telemetry is really two things. It is an open specification that actually describes how telemetry data should be represented, and it's software that implements that specification. So it is both defining a standard and actually giving you the tools that you need to use that standard to instrument your code and to generate and export telemetry data. Open telemetry has an uh, interesting history. It's one of these uh, success stories in open source, I think. Um, it came out of the recognition that there were actually two competing, unintentionally competing standards in this space. Uh, in 2016, the Open Tracing project was founded, and Open Tracing was an effort to describe a specification that would describe an API for uh, instrumenting your code with tracing data. Around the same time, Open Census started, which was a project that I believe grew out of Google. And a year later, these two groups realized that they served the same uh, sets of needs largely. And so Open Telemetry was formed as a way of combining the best of Open Tracing and Open Census. Uh, open Telemetry hit alpha in 2019, beta in 2020, and it's on track to become generally available this year, at which point Open Tracing and Open Census will sunset as projects. So Open Telemetry is really the future for how we envision people in, uh, instrumenting and adding telemetry to their systems. And the promise of open telemetry is really this, uh, this future of vendor neutral instrumentation. And this is what I'm frankly really, really excited about. Uh, I really believe that instrumentation should be boring. And this is an essential part of making that happen. Uh, and when I say boring, I don't mean like put you to sleep. What I mean is it shouldn't be a thing that you spend an awful lot of time thinking about. Anybody who's worked in microservices architectures or anybody who's worked on large monoliths knows that instrumenting your code isn't actually in itself valuable. It's what you get out of that instrumentation that creates value. It's the observability that you add to your systems that creates value. So if you have to re-implement instrumentation every time you choose a new tool, that's a bad choice for you. It doesn't create value. It's a huge time suck. And frankly, a lot of organizations just won't be able to do it. So OTEL replaces the need for vendor-specific SDKs. Um, at the moment, it supports tracing context propagation. So you can have distributed systems where services are calling each other, and you can connect those uh, requests as from the customer's perspective. Uh, Open Telemetry also supports metrics and are working on a log specification. And the components of Open Telemetry, uh, I mentioned already that there is a cross-language specification. And so this is really the, the governing spec. This is how uh, you know, different language communities and different tool vendors should, should uh, go about creating tools that conform to open telemetry specification. Uh, so the spec is really important in guaranteeing that people have a consistent experience with open telemetry and that there's interoperability between various open telemetry components. There's also a tool called the open telemetry collector, which I absolutely love and a lot of our customers have gotten really good use out of. Um, the Open Telemetry Collector is an agent, or it can be run as a sidecar or as a central part of your infrastructure. But what it does, it's basically a proxy that can do some processing. So it allows you to uh, take trace, trace data, maybe in one or more formats, add some processing to them. Maybe you want to do, you know, uh, scrubbing data from them or do something else to the to the spans in flight, and then send them off to one or more backend syncs. Uh, that could be a vendor, an in-house tool, et cetera. So I think of the collector as like the Swiss army knife for your telemetry data. Uh, Open Telemetry is also a collection of per-language APIs and SDK libraries. Uh, so this is really important. Open Telemetry has a community of people from different language backgrounds who are all working on making sure that it works consistently with Java, C Sharp, Ruby, uh, .NET, or Python, et cetera. Uh, and then OpenTelemetry also includes auto instrumentation libraries. 
And these are libraries that you can just plug into your code. And they're the kind of lowest effort way to start getting useful data about your systems right away. So uh, I'll walk through a few examples of how that works. But basically, the hope is that you can just drop something into your application and start using uh, an observability tool right away. So that's what open telemetry is. I want to talk a little bit about why I think this matters uh, and why I think it's really important that there is a solid community building an open specification and tools for telemetry data. And there's a few things that I think uh, really stand out to me, um, both when I'm working on this stuff at Honeycomb and when talking to customers uh, who are either evaluating us or actively using us. The first is that open telemetry is a large and active community. Um, you know, there are hundreds of people who are members of the actual open telemetry GitHub organization. And that's actually just a, a subset of people who are committing to open telemetry. Those are the people who have gone through the process to become official members. There are far more people who have, you know, submitted pull requests, do code reviews, et cetera. Um, this community is going to outpace any single vendor. So, you know, if you are working with a language specific SDK and there's a bug in it, the chances are that somebody else in the community has encountered that, maybe actively working on it, or you yourself can become a contributor. And so the power of this community just means that, like I said, they're going to outpace any single vendor. And I think that's a win for everybody in the, in the space. The other benefit to having an open standard govern how you uh, instrument your code and generate telemetry is that it's, it adds support for custom telemetry pipelines. And this is something I've seen a lot. Um, you know, when you're starting out with observability and with instrumenting your code, you might just sprinkle in some instrumentation into your application, or you might add an auto instrumentation library and send it off to a single backend like Honeycomb. And that's a great way to start. But as organizations mature their telemetry pipelines and have more complicated needs, you may start seeing the need to, say, fork off your telemetry data. And so I've certainly seen uh, scenarios where someone wants to send their trace data to a vendor like Honeycomb, but they may also have an in-house tool that they're also using to collect that trace data. Maybe it's because different teams use different tools and there's a rollout process and not everybody is ready to get on board with a single vendor. Uh, or it could be that you have different retention requirements. Like I've also seen people take um, their event data and their trace data and send it off to a vendor like Honeycomb while also archiving it on S3 so that if you ever have to do any kind of batch processing or ETL or anything like that, you're free to do that. Um, I've seen people dual stream their metrics and traces through Kafka, through a, um, you know, something like Kafka, and that allows them to do stream processing and whatnot. So again, you know, as you mature an organization, as an organization grows larger, you're going to see more of these needs for custom telemetry pipelines. And having an open standard just means that you can mix and match those tools and use tools from, uh, from various parts of the community, which I think is really powerful. Uh, the other funny use case that crops up all the time, and I absolutely love this as both a you know person who works for Honeycomb, but also somebody who comes from the SRE space and is used to evaluating solutions like this, is having an open standard for telemetry allows you to have choices. Uh, I mentioned instrumenting your code is not where the value is. It's getting the observability into your systems. That's where the value is. And so if I'm in a position where I want to evaluate multiple vendors or storage solutions or whatever, I really don't want to instrument my code more than once. Uh, that to me would be just a non-starter if there's an alternative. And so what OpenTelemetry allows you to do is instrument your application once, uh, instrument all your systems, set up your telemetry pipeline, and then use multiple OTLP exporters to send data to two vendors at once. Uh, as a vendor, this is a great thing. It allows us to actually compete on whether or not the tool is a right fit and not whether you've had to go through the pain of instrumenting your code. And that's where I think we all want to be. Uh, it's worth mentioning that OpenTelemetry is built in such a way that you can do this either with an OpenTelemetry collector, that component that I mentioned where it can run as a sidecar to your application, or you can just do it in code by specifying multiple exporters. So the point here is that all of these challenges exist, and those are only a subset of challenges that I've heard from uh, users of, of telemetry. 
and people implementing uh, observability solutions. But open telemetry makes this boring. And that's the, that's the place I think we all want to be. It just makes a lot of this stuff table stakes. Um, I think further into the future and where this idea that instrumentation is boring can go. And, you know, we're starting to see adoption in this in the open telemetry community where the authors of popular libraries, for instance, are instrumenting their code. So if you have like a MySQL or Redis library or something like that, the author could actually drop open telemetry code into their project so that if you use their library, it's automatically emitting telemetry. This is really, really cool to me and really, really exciting. Um, I'm really excited to see a future where, you know, maybe framework authors do the same thing. And I know that some are actively working on this where they dump observability data into their framework so that you use a framework and you automatically get this stuff out. Uh, these are all the things that open telemetry makes happen. And I think that there is a very near future where instrumentation becomes really boring as a result. We just don't think about it, which I think is wonderful. So that's a lot about open telemetry and why I think it's exciting. Let's talk a little bit about Honeycomb's journey into the open telemetry project. Um, so we started this about uh, two years ago. At the time, open telemetry, uh, the specification had not yet hit 1.0. But we were already seeing a lot of interest, and we knew that this was going to be an exciting space. So our first job was actually to kind of collect data, to give our users some, uh, especially the early adopters, some tools to start using open telemetry, and, uh, and really see how it went. So we released Honeycomb exporters for Go, Java, and Python. And these exporters are, you can think of them as like bolt-on uh, plugins to the OpenTelemetry ecosystem so that you can use an OpenTelemetry SDK and use a Honeycomb-specific exporter to send that data to Honeycomb. Uh, around the same time, we released the Honeycomb exporter for the OpenTelemetry collector. And so I've talked a bit about the collector. That meant that you could run the collector with a Honeycomb-specific exporter and just translate your OpenTelemetry data into Honeycomb data. So this was a great way for us to test the waters. And I'm really happy to say that we saw a lot of positive feedback from our users. Uh, this is what instrumenting your code with a, with a Honeycomb exporter would look like. So you'd set up your exporter with uh, your Honeycomb credentials uh, and then pass that in when you're creating an open telemetry trace provider. So like I mentioned, we saw a lot of positive uh, input from our customers and we saw some adoption uh, in phase one of our adoption of open telemetry. And so we realized that we didn't really want a future where we had to maintain all these extra plugins, these exporters. That wasn't good for us. It wasn't good for our customers because they had to keep track of more language uh, specific libraries. So we worked on adding ingest support for, the, for OTLP, which is the open telemetry protocol. At this point, we, we released support for ingesting OTLP over gRPC in December 2020. So as of that date, customers could use any open telemetry project that supports gRPC. And without any specific Honeycomb specific exporters, they were able to just start sending us telemetry data. Um, we added support for ingesting trace data to our events API as well as our two uh, proxy products, Refinery, which is a sampling proxy, and our secure tenancy proxy. Uh, so however you were using Honeycomb, you could use OTLP over gRPC without any Honeycomb specific adapters and start sending data to us. And so this actually saw really, really strong adoption. Um, you know, the code from a code perspective, this didn't really simplify the boilerplate because you still had to set up an exporter, but now it's an OTLP exporter and there's no Honeycomb specific libraries in here. This is all stuff that's packaged with OpenTelemetry SDKs. Uh, and so we started seeing a lot of adoption right away. A lot of people were really excited about using OTLP. So now we've started moving on to phase three. And uh, phase three, I'm really excited about. This is what we're actively working on now, which is we've recognized that our customers are excited about o o telemetry, as excited as us. Uh, we've seen adoption of using OTLP, and we've seen um, strong support across different uh, language um, you know, specific libraries and whatnot. So, now what we're focusing on is making that journey easier for our customers. We already know you want to use OpenTelemetry. We already know you, you want to use Honeycomb. Let's make it easier to work to use those things together. So we're working on Honeycomb distributions for OpenTelemetry. And you know, these distributions, uh, we're working on Java right now. We've got .NET uh, in the, in the, uh, up next. Um, but we're going to roll these out for the languages that we support. And our goals are kind of threefold. It's to simplify configuration for Honeycomb. 
Uh, and what I mean there is you shouldn't have to worry about how your credentials are sent, what header names you know you need to specify. You should just be able to set an API key, set a data set, and be on your way. We also want to enable certain honeycomb specific features. And so this is where these are things that are all technically possible with open telemetry, like adding trace fields to your uh, to your spans. But we want to make it a little bit easier and just get out of your way. From then on, it is just open telemetry. So we definitely don't want to violate the vendor neutrality. Uh, if ever you use a honeycomb open telemetry distribution, and then later down the road, for whatever reason, you decide you don't want to, all you'll have to replace is the is the configuration code, the code that actually gets you up and running with uh, vanilla code from the open telemetry SDK. And then you're off to the races. So it's very, very much focused on, at that point, getting out of your way, just giving you access to the great open telemetry API. And so here's some samples of what it looks like now. Uh, I mentioned that we were working on Java. We just released uh, that and uploaded it to Maven Central. So if you're a Java user and an open telemetry user, you can start using this today. Um, and notice you know, how we've tried to structure this experience is around the idea that you shouldn't need to know the internals of how certain information is being transmitted to the back end. So when you instantiate a builder, for instance, we don't want you to worry about the fact that service name is a resource attribute. What we really want you to know is that you can set a service name on your trace data. And uh, any trace that's generated from this tracer will have that service name attached to it when you look at the Honeycomb back end. Similarly, when you're adding credentials, just set API key, set data set, the other thing that we've added uh, support for, and I mentioned certain Honeycomb specific uh, features, is samplers that are compatible with Honeycomb. And so sampling is an area where OpenTelemetry has defined uh, an interface, but OpenTelemetry is not in a position to really offer a lot of sampling solutions because those are gonna be vendor specific. So on Honeycomb, we've added a deterministic head sampler. And when you pass into the constructor, for instance, five, what you're saying is I want one out of every five of my traces to arrive at Honeycomb. Um, and then we will set the sample rate on those so that when we're showing you your data on the Honeycomb UI, we will amplify uh, you know, traces, knowing that a specific trace represents five traces. The, uh, open, the Java open telemetry distribution also includes an auto instrumentation agent. And so again, we wanted to make this simpler. Uh, when you know you're using Honeycomb, you should just have to specify your Honeycomb API key, the data set, and then optionally, you can set a sample rate and you can set uh, a service name. And these are all just sent as system properties when invoking the JVM with your Java application. Uh, so running this command, uh, if you have you know, a jar file that bundles your uh, Java application, will start sending uh, telemetry, like trace data to Honeycomb that's auto-instrumented from your code. So this is the, the sort of straightforward way to start using Honeycomb with Java is just to run it with a Java agent um, of our, of our uh, distribution. So you know, I had that sample where I just ran my application with a Java agent and with Honeycomb credentials. And this is just a quick sample app, a Spring Boot application that I threw together. But you'll see that automatically I'm getting tracing of customer requests. Um, and so I get you know, all of the fields that are generated automatically by the agent. And then I get spans representing things like the request, the actual uh, request mapping to a function, to a method in a controller, um, and even some stuff on the network layer. And so what we want to do also, uh, I mentioned, you know, there's auto instrumentation, and then there's also using our SDK to add manual instrumentation to your spans. This is something we really want to encourage people to do. So uh, auto instrumentation, we always say, gets you so far. To truly understand your code, you're going to have to do some manual instrumentation at some point. And we want to make this as easy as possible. So using, for instance, the Java uh, Honeycomb open telemetry distribution, all you need to do is set attribute on the current span if you want to add data to a span that's in flight. And so it's so boring, you might not see it. It's these two lines right here are just adding a couple of attributes to the current span um, to a regular you know, honey, uh, Spring Boot um, uh, you know, controller method. And so here I'm adding uh, just a, a simple you know, hard-coded attribute. And then I'm adding an attribute with the number of records returned from a query. And here they are. Uh, you know, if I run that code and I run that request, I'll see that my fields show up in the Honeycomb um, UI. So that's where we're at right now. We're really happy that we got the Java uh, distribution out the door in time for Honeycon uh, and Olicon. We're excited to see uh, our customers start to use it. 
Uh, I mentioned that next up is .NET. We're actively working on a C-sharp distribution. After that, we'll start rolling out to our other supported languages. So Go, Python, uh, Ruby, JavaScript, uh, and, and go on from there. So just to recap, um, you know, we think this is really exciting. I'm really excited about seeing the OpenTelemetry project mature, evolve, and I'm really excited to see our customers start to adopt this. Um, I'd really encourage everybody to visit docs.honeycomb.io. You'll start to see OpenTelemetry featured a lot more prominently on there. Uh, and also visit the OpenTelemetry project at opentelemetry.io. Uh, there's tons of doc great documentation there, also information on getting involved in the community. Um, special calls to action is if you're a library author, you know, consider instrumenting your, your library uh, with OpenTelemetry. And same thing goes out to framework authors. You know, I would love to see more frameworks adopt OpenTelemetry so that when users use your application framework, they get telemetry data for free. And we achieve that dream of, of instrumentation being boring. Uh, happy to take any questions at this point. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Wow, Paul, I think what we've learned is that instrumentation is not boring. Um, loved the talk. Thanks so much. Yeah, I really loved uh, talking about this. It's a, it's a topic I think a lot about, and I think a lot of our customers really care about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I wanted to ask you, I, I really loved what you said about OpenTelemetry being this like large community that outpaces any single vendor, I think is how you said it. Um, and it seems like it is or can be the bleeding edge of telemetry and instrumentation. Um, so I'm curious, you know, what possibilities do you see that opening up? How does that change the landscape for us? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I do think that open telemetry will outpace any vendor. And, you know, the reason is really the same as the same as the reason for any open source project. When you have, you know, a large community of people who cross organizational boundaries working towards a similar goal, you're going to see these kind of network effects. And I think those are going to really have cool implications for people working on systems. Um, there are some obvious examples, you know, like I, I mentioned during the talk, library authors starting to instrument their code with uh, open telemetry. So that's fantastic. You know, it means that if I'm using like an HTTP client in my code, every time I send an HTTP request, I can have a span automatically emitted by that HTTP library. And I don't have to think about it. There's, there's the boring part. Um, now, of course, we all know that auto instrumentation gets you so far. But having open telemetry as a standard API means that I should also be able to just grab that span. I think of it as like grabbing it out of the air and saying, you know, I want to add an attribute that's specific to my code, or I want to start a sub, uh, you know, a child span from this point of my code on. But all of that should be possible. Um, and an HTTP library is really like the most obvious example, but I think there's also some non-obvious things that I want that I'd love to see happen. And I'm thinking of things like pieces of your architect or of your infrastructure start to actually adopt open telemetry. So, uh, you know, databases, for instance, like if you're making a database query, being able to grab that span out of the air and have information that's actually coming from the internal of your database engine. Uh, in that span as attributes would be hugely helpful to people who are working on debugging. Um, oftentimes we do things like we try to wrap around the database call or we instrument like the logs of the database to send telemetry to a backend system. But what if that was all done by open telemetry? Um, I think about things like load balancers, you know, like being able to truly trace the request from end to end. Um, and that all becomes possible, I think, because open telemetry is the de facto standard for having to do this stuff. So that's like software systems, but then also language communities. Um, you know, looking at Honeycomb and looking at a lot of our competitors or people in the in the open source landscape, you you're always going to see libraries implemented in like Java, you know, probably .NET, um, Go, Ruby, Python. But there's a lot of languages that are often lacking, and it's just if you're you know in a niche category or maybe it's just a language that isn't as popularly adopted. Like I'm thinking like Scala or you know something like. Uh, even Rust or, you know, older languages that are still popularly used, like PHP, um, open telemetry allows, you know, is going to have more support for this because there's more people interested and there's all these different language sub communities. So I think it's just that speeding up that adoption and making it so ubiquitous, um, you know, I can even imagine cloud vendors implementing this stuff so that you just have systems that are just sending telemetry data. And then your job actually becomes deciding what telemetry data you might want to suppress, you know, like maybe you don't want all this data, um, but it's really nice to have it and be able to make use of it if you need it.
Yeah, really cool. There's this this idea of ease and plug and play and then customization. Like it's 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 magical. Um, cool. Uh, you, you mentioned custom telemetry pipelines and how the open standard sort of enables sending metrics to multiple vendors, um, fitting to different teams needs, especially in larger enterprises. So I'm curious how to hear how you think uh, that evolves and grows over time um, from a small, maybe like a small shop to to a bigger one. Yeah, absolutely. Um... So I think, you know, think about the archetypal small shop. It's you and I, we're building an app. Um, you know, we're using a hosting provider for everything. We're, you know, um, buying instead of building as we should. And, you know, that means you and I just want to instrument our code. So we're going to have that. We're going to choose a vendor probably. Uh, we're going to send all our telemetry data to that vendor and we're going to call it a day. Over time, our organization grows and let's say we get like um, a machine learning or like, you know, a, a data science team that wants to use machine learning to add features to our application. Well, we've got events, you know, so that's fantastic in the form of, of trace spans. And so that's not a use case that Honeycomb is really going to solve, right? We're not going to be implementing machine learning models, uh, you know, that are applicable to your business. Uh, to our business. So instead, maybe you pipe that data off and you send those events to some team that's then ingesting those uh, and you know using them to make product decisions based on user behavior. That's one hypothetical. Uh, another is analytics. You know, like you want to know every time something happens in your system, well, you've already instrumented your code. You're already collecting that data. So implement something like an open telemetry collector with a filter. Uh, just say send you know t this data off to some analytics backend. Um, this is where I see like a lot of organizations, I think will hit a size where they'll probably use like a centralized broker like Kafka or something like that to basically tee off the data streams into different teams and to, uh, you know, for different purposes. One of them will be the, the primary reason that we started with, which was, you know, debugging production systems uh, to maintain availability and reliability. Um, but other things, you know, come to mind. Uh, the other thing I could definitely see is, you know, different teams having slightly different needs as an organization grows, right? So not one product is going to be usable by everybody for every purpose. Um, you know, so being able to actually uh, have one product in use in one part of the organization, another product in use in another, but having the same data essentially, uh, I think is really powerful. So I think as an organization evolves, you just see more and more use like that. And, you know, having a unified protocol for both the data format and for the API, I think just opens up a world of opportunities. And I'd actually like to see vendors that are in adjacent spaces, like some of these, you know, business intelligence or analytics companies start to adopt open telemetry as a way of like mining information about what's happening in your systems. That's so, so rad. Um, cool. Uh, Paul, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you.